All right, so today we're gonna go over this Helldivers 2 helmet and how I went about building it. Now I did document this entire process while I was building this, but it wasn't that great. Uh, basically I was recording before every step to kind of explain the next step that I was gonna take for this. And since there'd be time between each process, I was repeating things a lot that I'd say in the previous take. Uh, and then I didn't end up recording any B-roll of it because at the time I thought the explanation was good enough. Uh, we can go ahead and chalk that up to me being new at making long form content. But now what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk you through each step that I took for making this helmet. And then maybe I'll be able to use some of that other footage as B-roll. But let's go ahead and try that. The first step was printing this helmet. Obviously, you gotta print out all the pieces before you put it together. And I've had some people complain about me not walking through every step. So again, I'm not gonna have B-roll of this, but you do gotta print out all the pieces. So this file is from Galactic Armory, and one of the things that they do very well is that they orient the files for you. So this is usually set up to give you whatever is the best detail and ensure that your interface layer is not touching the parts of your helmet that'll make it look sloppy. And it gives it a really good finish. So it also looks like they try to set it up for speed, but I do think that it's secondary to the nice finish, which I personally prefer. The helmet comes in three separate parts. It comes in this dome piece, the lower back piece, which is right here, I wanna say is where it starts, and then the front and mouth piece, which is right here. They also include detail pieces, which are printed separately, which includes this vent and this little side silver piece there, uh, which is really, really good for when you do the painting process. Now, one really cool thing about the Galactic Armory files is that they include a file to print the buck and the buck is what's used to make your visor. Now, in order to use this properly, you do need a vacuum forming station, which I did not have at the time, but we will get to that once I start to talk about the visor piece. Something I did a little bit different in this for the printing process was that I split this specific vent detail into two different halves. Now, you can't see, but under this, there's the key and the hole, and the key kind of divots in. So if you were to print it how they had it, then you would have a lot of interface layer and I wanted it to fit snugly. So all I really did was cut it in half and then I used 3D glue to glue it together. One of the difficulties that I ran into was printing this mouth part. Uh, the bottom of it for some reason was not adhering very well to the interface layer um, and it was giving it kind of a sloppy finish. Now, luckily this whole thing is printed in Polymaker's Cos PLA, so it was pretty easy to sand down and it's not very noticeable, but the first time I printed it, I did have to, uh, you know, throw it in the garbage because it was a failed print, but then it did work the second time. So the print time for me on this was just overnight, but that's because I have three Bamboo Lab X1Cs, but uh, I do believe each piece took about 10 hours and there was quite a bit of support material, especially for this dome piece. I did adjust my outer layer setting to be set to 100, uh, and that's just so that I could get a nice smoother finish and then it wouldn't have to sand as much later. Now, once my pieces were all printed, it's time to sand down the connector pieces and connect this helmet up. The connector pieces are right here, and then on the dome, there's just like a lip that you can really, really easily glue together. So something I did different from this one was I introduced 3D Gloop, which is a product that I've never used before, but it's a technique that I think I'm gonna be including from now on. The 3D Gloop, uh, it actually kind of melts the PLA on both sides so that you can just kind of stick it together and then it fuses into one solid material, which I think is great. Uh, once it was fused together on the inside, I went ahead and rubbed the 3D Gloop on so that it would kind of melt that seam together and it turned out really well. So like I said, I will be including this in my future processes. Now it's time for sanding and smoothing. I don't think that when I recorded this, I actually didn't really talk about it very much because there's so many videos out there on how to do a proper finish. So all I did was I took my Milwaukee sand detail sander and I used 120 to 180 grit all across the helmet until it looked smooth to me. I then took it downstairs to my garage, I hit it with filler primer, and then uh, I did that until I couldn't see any layer lines. I went ahead and sanded it again, hit it again with primer. I think I repeated this whole process two or three times until I felt comfortable moving on to my first layer of black. I would say that timing wise, this really only took me a little over an hour because the primer does dry really fast. So for the first base layer, I used Citadel Chaos Black, which I just kind of happened to have lying around my garage. 
Um, it was about that time that I saw that Galactic Armory had just put out their full build video for this helmet, which was a huge help to me. I went ahead and masked off the brow, the mohawk, the mouthpiece, and then this back lower part of the helmet because it needed to remain the chaos black. Uh, I went ahead to my local hardware store and I picked up some Rust-Oleum metallic charcoal. Uh, it is a lighter gunmetal color and it's what you see here all around the helmet that is not black. And then it was during that drying process that I went ahead and sprayed my detail pieces. And what I used was just a aluminum um, spray paint that I kind of had laying around. I do think any aluminum spray paint would work for this. So whatever you have on you would work fine. So after that was dry, it was time to mask off the area for the yellow stripes that are on each side and around the vent ports here. Galactic Armory mentioned that they're about one and a quarter inches width from the front all the way to the back and about one centimeter here around the vents. Now what they didn't mention was the stripes offset from the mohawk. The offset from the vent is pretty obvious. There's just some geometry that you can kind of follow and then it gives it that nice little silvered rim. But the offset for the mohawk is right around, this is about three quarters of an inch right here on each side. Or if you only want to do one stripe, you just do three quarters of an inch on the other side. In their video, they said to use Rust-Oleum Ginger Yellow from, uh, for the stripes, but I went to three different hardware stores and I couldn't find that color. So instead, I went with this one. I don't have it on me up here. It's downstairs uh, and I didn't grab it for this video, but I will put it right here, the exact color that I used, probably with a picture. Um, now with this yellow, I did notice that I got some pooling and some leaking through my masking tape, uh, usually around here. And I believe that that's because I was trying to do too many heavy coats and I wasn't really taking my time with this. The reason why I was going so I was going so fast between layers is because I thought that I was going to be making this uh, cosplay for PAX, but it ended up not going and I rushed for absolutely no reason. So when the paint was finished drying, it will act almost like a vinyl. And you can kind of see around here, uh, what happens is I, I let it dry a little too much and when I pulled my paint back, it started to peel almost like a bad vinyl wrap on a car. Now that only happened on some spots and it was easy enough to just kind of push back down and I kind of figured that the clear coat at the end would give it a nice top layer that would keep it pressed down. So basically all the painting is done. I glued on all my detail pieces, I vinyl cut some little yellow triangles, and then I used a print, I made print and cut Helldiver stickers over on my Cricut. I then used some Citadel silver paint to do the other little detail pieces like this, this, and then there's a little vent port on the back that I, uh, if you guys want, here is what that looks like. Boop. Yeah, just down there. That whole thing is Citadel silver, and then it's pretty much all done. All that's left now is the weathering, which is a pretty cool part that I, or a pretty cool process that I've really never done before. So for the weathering process, I mixed some oil-based black paint and some mineral spirits, and then I just kind of wiped it off the helmet as I went. Now, prior to doing this method, I did go ahead and hit it with multiple layers of clear coat because I didn't want the mineral spirits to wipe away any of this paint job underneath. So when I first started weathering, I really, really thought I messed up because when I first wiped, it was just pure black. I thought I ruined this helmet and I really started to freak out. So I started wiping it away with my little rag that I had and it all came pretty much right off. Uh, it did leave like a little bit of kind of a dirt buildup, which is exactly what I wanted. So then I kind of just kept adding layer after layer. And then once I thought I had a nice solid buildup, I would go ahead and hit it with clear coat. And then if I, you know, I wanted it to look a little more dirty, so then I'd hit it with some more. I kind of just kept going back and forth with that process. And the reason why you go with the clear coat between, you know, dirt layers is so that you can keep what you already have. Because if you go to add more mineral spirits, there's a chance you can lose that and wipe it away. So make sure that you're using clear coat between each one. Now, uh, once I thought it was dirty enough, I went ahead and covered it with a satin clear coat because I really didn't want it to be too glossy. Uh, that satin finish is still a little glossy for me, so I did order dull coat from Tensors, and I plan on hitting this helmet with a layer of that eventually to kind of dull out this gloss, because I think the Helldiver should look a little dirty. So for the visor, now I did start setting up a station, and I realized that I didn't have like any of the parts. I ordered a vacuum sealer off of eBay. It was about 150 bucks, and it's super easy to find. Uh, highly recommend, I wanna say it's like 24 by 24. Um, but I also needed to build up a heating station and a dyeing area, and I just didn't have time. Again, I thought this was gonna be for packs, and it turned out not. 
Um, once I did order all the parts, I was like, I just need a visor right now. And you can order the visor from Galactic Armory's website. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, in the future, I'll make my own visors, but for this one, I think ordering it was fine. Once the visor arrived, uh, I just printed off some visor clips. I wanna say the file was called Mandalorian Visor Clip over on Thingiverse, and then I just 3D glooped them on the inside and then kind of slid my visor into place. Now, this isn't on there permanently. There's only two clips on it for now because I do want to hit this with a dull coat, but, uh, and I wanted to be able to pull the visor out. So once I do hit it with my dull coat, or if I, you know, end up not doing it, I'm gonna glue some more visor clips on and make this permanent there. I also ended up printing this really cool, let's see if I can get it, this Helldiver's helmet stand, which is also available from Galactic Armory. I printed it in black and just painted it white and then I got some PVC pipe, and then that is what's holding this helmet up. It's also really, really good for your paint station, and I just have a really tall piece of PVC, and then that's how I do all my spray painting. But something else is they also make this wall mount, wall mount that you can see right here, and I went ahead and printed that and then put it over on my wall. So yeah, that's about it. I can put my helmet up there, and it looks great, and um, the helmet's all done. So. If you guys want to see more content like this, then leave a like and let me know in the comments what project you guys would like to see me work on next. I wanted to say thank you to Polymaker for supplying me with the Cos PLA that uh, I used to make this project, and thank you to Galactic Armory for making such a cool file. So I hope to see you guys in the next one, and I'll talk to you later.